Hey there everyone, I'm Lisa Baylash from the Kettlebell Bombshell DVD series and I'm also a Fitfluential Ambassador. So today on the Fitfluential blog post that I wrote, Whittle Your Waistline with Kettlebells, we're going to go over some of the exercises that I have listed for you guys to do. So if you're not familiar with these exercises, this would be a perfect time for you to learn them and to start incorporating them into your kettlebell routine. As many of you know, if you already follow me or you watch some of my other videos and read my blogs, I really try to get away from just doing swings with kettlebells. Yes, they are a good exercise, but there's so much emphasis on them that it really takes away from the value of the kettlebell because it has so many other great exercises that have a lot more benefits to them. So, speaking of, we're going to start off, I'm going to teach you how to do some halos, then we're going to go to the seesaw press, the woodchopper lunge, figure eight to the shoulder, the half Turkish getup, and some Russian twists, and I believe the windmill. So those are the exercises that I have, and you guys can perform them in a circuit, or you can do them individually, however you choose, will be fine. So let's go ahead and start with the halo. A lot of people see these, and the thing that they do wrong is they move the elbows far away from the body, out like this. We always want our elbows down, because that keeps the shoulders in their sockets, which keeps them protected, and it also makes you engage your core a lot more when the shoulders are away from the ears. So the second people do this, their shoulders come up and they're not getting as much of their core muscles. So we're gonna hold the kettlebell upside down. I recommend using a lighter bell to start, especially if you're a beginner. So maybe even just holding something in your hand and practicing the move or without any weight at all. All right, so what I'm gonna do is you're gonna turn the bell upside down and as you do, you're gonna open the chest and then bring the elbow in. So see how my elbows come in and then I rotate like this. So the whole thing is about feeling the oblique muscles, and right here I'm opening the chest. So you'll go ahead and you'll do 10 per side, and I'll just switch because I did a few to be even. So opening the chest here, elbows flare out, and then you come down like a crunch. So that's going to activate a lot more of your muscles, and it's also going to open up the chest and the shoulders. So making your abdominals, the key um, focus here is good but also building nice shoulders and back muscles give you that illusion of a V-taper so that your waist appears smaller. Now I'm not talking about building gigantic muscles, it's just having some shoulder muscles and a little bit of your lats come out will give you that nice V-taper. And it does, um, what it does focus on is symmetry of the body. And so when you're working out, you don't want to just say, I want abs, and then leave the rest of your body alone. You want to be symmetrical. So that's what is actually you know, the most appealing in any type of workout that you do, is to have symmetry and proportion. Okay, so those are your halos. Okay, so then the second one that we're going to do is the seesaw press. So you are going to need two bells, or you can even do them with, with uh, dumbbells if you don't have two kettlebells of equal weight. So cleaning the bells. What you're going to do for the seesaw press is you're going to press... One side up, rotate to the opposite direction, bring it down, and now don't stop at the bottom like this because it gets heavier. So you wanna ideally keep the bells moving. So we're gonna go up and turn, sticking your chest out because you don't wanna only use the shoulders, you wanna elongate the abdominals, the obliques, and you also wanna feel your shoulders working, your lats working, and your chest working. Okay. So there's the seesaw press, and then from there we'll go into the wood chopper lunge. So when you do the wood chopper, you want to put one hand in front of the other, and I'll come up and show you this really quick. You want to, whatever hand is in front, we're going to actually turn the bell upside down and bring it to that shoulder. So, so since I had the right hand in front, turn it, bring it up. Now, there's a few ways to do the wood chopper lunge. You can lunge forward and chop to the opposite side, and then a nice lunge. Don't just do like a step forward. A lot of people do this. That's not a lunge. You want to actually lunge. So you want to go down and then pushing back. Now, if you want to do the reverse, you can do um, wood chopper reverse lunge. So that would be wherever the bell is on that side, you would step backward, still chop to the opposite leg. So I'll switch that on so you can see from the other side. So we're going to step yeah, this way. We're going to step back and chop to the outside. So down. And you're going to feel one side feels pretty awkward. That's normal because you're going to feel that twisting on one side will feel a little bit different. Okay, so 
moving from there, you can either do them forward, reverse, or you can do them in both directions, which is great. Now we're going to go into the figure eight to the shoulder. So through the inner thigh, the empty side of the bell, you're going to grab it, stand up, bring it across the body like you're doing the Pledge of Allegiance. So how do we get this side of the handle through the inner thigh? You're just going to go rotate the bell and bring it across. Notice again, like I told you earlier with the elbows, the elbows need to stay down. So you're going to go down, pop back up with the legs. This is done with the legs, not the arms. The arms are directing it. Exhale on the way up, like so. So there's your figure eight to the shoulder. And then from there, we're going to go into, let's go ahead and do the half to So you're going to lie down on the ground. If you have a mat, great. If not, that's fine too. Most likely you'll be doing these at home. So if you're in your living room, that's awesome. All right, so doing the half get up, we're just gonna omit the standing version. So you're just not gonna stand all the way up. So lying on your back. So this is gonna emphasize more of the core. I always like to pull it into the rack with my other arm because this way you can hurt your shoulders pretty bad. If you grab weight and go like this, you can hurt your rotator cuff. So help yourself out, pull this up into the rack position. This arm can do the work because the angle is different. That's what you want to do, protect your body. Okay, as we press the bell up, I'm going to straighten this leg. The same side is bent. This arm is going to be slightly bent on the ground. You're going to press the bell, then you're going to inhale, exhale, roll up, push with the opposite arm. Now from there, lift your body, and then sit back down and roll back down. And I'll do one on the other side. So when you go to switch sides, you grab it by the handle here on the outside, cross it over your chest, not your face, unless you want to pay for some dental work, I guess. <laughs> okay, put that in the rack, pull it in there nice and gently. Now you can see from this side what I'm doing. This elbow will be down. You're going to press the bell up, sink your shoulder into the socket, inhale, exhale, roll, roll, roll up, lift your body, lower back down safely. Notice my focus is on the bell, elbow is bent. Now scoop in the abs and roll backwards, nice and slow. All right, so you can go ahead and add those in. And each time, I recommend a switch. So we'll go into the Russian twist. You can do it a couple of different ways. You can hold it here and just twist side to side. I tend to not like a big range of motion on this because I feel I will incorporate my lower back, which is something I totally don't want to do. So from here, I like to keep it hip to hip. So this way I'm really twisting and I'm really scooping in like Pilates style, belly button to spine. So this way I'm protecting my back and I'm really using as much of my abs as possible. And again, elbows shouldn't be up here because then you're in the shoulders. They should be down. So you want to hold. See how tight my elbows stay? And that's how you get into the core and not into your shoulders and into your lower back. Okay, so to end our awesome whittle your waistline workout with the windmill. A lot of people have trouble with these, so I recommend start off without any weight at all. So well, I'm going to do exactly what I just told you. All right, so you don't want a wide stance. This is not yoga. This is not triangle pose. You want to have like a moderate stance like this. This foot's going to point out that way. The hip pushes out like you have an attitude, like really? Yeah. Okay, so from here, pushing that hip out, raise this arm up. And now as you reach down, just go to where your flexibility allows. If you're really tight in here, you might only get to here and be like, ow, this hurts, this hurts. Stop right there. There's no need to go any further. Don't force something if it doesn't work. So looking up here at the hand, if you do have that flexibility, keep reaching to the floor. Then you can try to straighten both legs. Most of our clients make the mistake of bending the back leg like this. Do not bend the back leg. You can bend the front leg, not the back leg. Okay, reaching up. And then as you come up, you rotate. So see how I'm incorporating this. So now when I do add the kettlebell to it, I'll do the other side. So from here, as I press out, and I can straighten my legs, I'm pretty flexible. So you want to come up, keep that shoulder in the socket, and turn. So I feel a lot of this, but also, you feel your glutes, your hamstrings. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to push through my heels, and then I'm going to do that rotation. Go ahead and safely bring that down into the rack position always being very respectful of your body and the tool that you're working with. So go ahead and 
Remember, when you are ending any exercise with the kettlebell, especially overhead, you have to bring it down first. Don't just bring it down any old way because that could lead to shoulder problems down the road. And, you know, it's just being careful, and that's what actually helps you stay injury-free is preventing things from happening by not being careless with your body or with the tools that you're working with. All right, so try this workout out and let me know how, what you think. You can go ahead and leave some comments for me here. Subscribe to Fitfluential here on YouTube. And also check out my blog posts on their website, fitfluential.com, and follow all their social media. And if you want to find out more about me, you can also go to kettlebellbombshell.com. Thanks again for watching, guys, and let me know what you think. Get started working on all these exercises and expand your knowledge with the kettlebell. It's a lot of fun when you do other exercises. All right, see you on the next video.